Welcome back. Now this is the time for real action. And in this particular section, we'll start with the introduction to RDBMS DB migration and what are the various actors, what are the various players in the whole process of DB migration, how we configure them, how we utilize the various important options provided by AWS. We'll go through all of that. So let's go. Source database. So the source database is a generally a self-managed in-house or on-cloud database which would be migrated to the cloud and or cloud or the, to the AWS Aurora or AWS RDS instances. Here we are going to use MySQL server which will be hosted and managed on a Windows EC2 instance. So the next is destination or target database. We could migrate MySQL database to various type of database engines which are provisioned by RDS. Here we are going to use AWS Aurora's MySQL instance. Now you see the source could be anywhere, the target could be anywhere and there are two very isolated instances. So what is the connecting entity between them? What exactly creates a pipeline which, which brings the data from source and loads it into the target? That's our database migration service. Now the database migration service, it looks like it's a single monolith service which does the magic and does everything uh, on itself. But no, a lot is going on behind it and there are a lot of components that serve together to make this a success. Let's go through what are all those components. The first is a replication instance. As you can guess from the name, it's a EC2 instance which does the bulk of the work of the whole database migration service. The data which is transferred over to the target is passing through this instance. The second is the source endpoint. The source endpoint is a sort of adapter which creates a connection between the source database and is used to connect this source database to your replication instance. The third one is a target endpoint. Again, the target endpoint could also be called an adapter which connects the replication instance to the target database. The last but not the least, there is a migration task. The migration task is what exactly does the processing. It is what which initiates the processing, takes the source, takes the target and takes the replication instance and does the actual job of transferring over the data. So how they look like? What is the interface like? Let's see. So these are our AWS management console. This is our, the, our main home page of AWS. Now here in the uh, search bar, you could uh, search for database migration service. Uh, here it is. And let's go to the migration service. Now this is the dashboard of the migration service. This is what you see when you come to the database migration service. Uh, it shows you the active tasks, the error tasks, the failed tasks, the task where the load has completed, your migration tasks which actually exist, the number of migration tasks, the replication instances and your endpoints. If you go to the, so uh, we'll go to the database migration task uh, at the end. Let's go to the replication instances first. So there, this is the page where you can configure the replication instances. Let's hit on the create replication instance button and this is the form you have to fill to take your replicate to configure your replication instance here you fill in the name your description your instance class so you can see depending on the type of workload that you're expecting the uh, and the amount of data you're expecting the kind of processing you are expecting you can select from a wide range of uh, low duty to heavy duty uh, EC2 instances. You can select the database engine version, then the amount of storage. If you want a certain storage size for your application instance, that's where you can configure it. The VPC, whether you want uh, it to be multi AZ or not, mostly for our purpose, we would not be selecting multi AZ, whether it is publicly accessible or not. This helps you. Um, in, in connecting to databases which are outside of your VPC. That is very critical actually. Then you can configure the advanced security network configuration. Uh, you can select a subnet group. You can select an availability zone, the security groups in your VPC and 
very important you need to have a kms master key this helps so this kms master key it helps you to keep your data secure during your migration then there is an optional maintenance uh, parameters that you want to select coming on to your endpoints there are two types of endpoints you can select you can select and configure so if you hit on the create endpoint you would see that there are two kinds of uh, endpoint types there are two endpoint types basically uh, one is the source endpoint other is the target endpoint so as a source or as a target you can select your any an existing rds db instance so you might want to migrate your existing rds db instance to another engine so let's say you want to select uh, your existing rds db instances and mysql and you want to migrate it over to ms sql that's where you you can go through this option then to configuration you would be uh, selecting a endpoint identifier which would be basically a label for your uh, database a source engine so you see the variety of all the services that uh, the dms provides you all these databases can be transferred from or to then you can configure the endpoints uh, specific settings the kms master key it will be the default key that we'll be using when you have configured the uh, endpoint you can test it and you can verify that your source can connect to it similar sort of settings you'd find in target endpoints also and uh, mostly you would not find much difference between the two then uh, the most important thing here which actually which actually will ensure that your migration goes through is database migration task when you're configuring a, a database migration task it will ask you for an identifier it will ask you for a replication instance a source and a target database endpoints and then the migration strategy whether you want to migrate existing data uh, you want to migrate an existing data and replicate ongoing changes which will be your ongoing transfer of data from source to destination or you want to just do the replicate data changes you don't want to migrate existing data or you have already migrated ex existing data that's where uh, you'll go for replicate data changes only so lobs what are lobs lobs are your large objects and um, uh, aws gives you uh, an option to whether you want to migrate the large objects from your source database to your target or not or it it so there are multiple op uh, options you see there you can either not include lob columns you can include full lob or you can have a restricted size for example here the default is 32 kb the objects beyond 32 kb they won't be transferred over whether you want to enable verification or not so if you want to to have a validation of whether the source data which was transferred over to trial target was done successfully or not the faithfully or not that you can validate here whether you want to enable cloudwatch logs so your all the all the logs from your migration they would be transferred over to cloudwatch for analysis and debugging then you go to the advanced test settings you can um, select a lot of options here you can create control table in target using the schema you can in involve the history time slot so basically control table help control tables help you to to record the status of your migration and you can uh, apply exceptions you can maintain replication status suspended tables application history and those kind of tables then you can select the maximum number of tables to load in parallel it is default eight you can select lesser or more number the transaction consistency timeout and the commit rate during full load so all these various options are available for you to uh, configure in the database migration task and that makes it very flexible a very very elaborate service which serves all kind of requirements so these are the actors which you will see in your journey to migration and we would be going through how to configure each of them step by step please follow through in next tutorial where we will be going and uh, configuring a source database